Yes, we know the high-profile U.S. delegation about to start these talks, led, of course, by U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin. We have the China Hawks, Peter Navarro and Robert Lighthizer, the U.S. Trade Representatives among them. But what about the Chinese team? Well, most likely it's going to be these people. Let's uh, just introduce you to them. Uh, the recently uh, elevated uh, Wang Qishan, of course, Vice President uh, of the People's Republic of China. Um, he's very much the point man when it comes to U.S.-China relations, big background in economic affairs, uh, and very much involved in dealing with uh, U.S.-China issues, very close to uh, President Xi as well. Yu He needs no introduction. He's the chief economic advisor uh, to the Chinese president. He's been here over the last couple of months trying to find a way uh, forward on trade negotiations as well. And then we have the Minister of Commerce, Zhang Shan. Uh, remember, he's been the trade representative for China for a long time. Uh, he's also uh, been uh, very much part of the economic blueprint going forward uh, for China, wants to uh, make China the strong trading nation by 2050. And then we have the Vice Finance Minister, Zhu Guangyao. Um, he's been very vocal in terms of saying that China will hit back uh, to the unilateral U.S. tariffs. And if anyone's studied the reform and opening up of the Chinese economy, then we know that the chairman of the National Development Reform Commission, He Li Feng, he's basically in charge of this huge ministry uh, which oversees uh, the Made in China 2025 project and beyond, all the restructuring that we've seen uh, in the Chinese economy. Uh, and also Yi Gang, uh, the newly appointed head of China's central bank. He's had a lot of American experience. He actually studied and taught at American universities, uh, and he's very much involved in the ongoing financial reforms of China. So a formidable team. Uh, we did hear from the uh, Chinese Foreign Ministry overnight saying that these negotiations are just the beginning. Taking into consideration the huge volume and complexity of the two countries' economies, it might not be that realistic to settle all the problems through one dialogue. But we believe as long as the U.S. comes to talk with sincerity to maintain a stable trade relationship and with the attitude of mutual respect, equality and mutual benefits, the talks will be constructive. You know, these talks are happening outside the structures that the U.S. and China had before the Trump administration, the economic dialogue, uh, for example. So we don't really have any idea of the agenda. Uh, there are some differences even among the American team, uh, even before they arrived in Beijing as well. Beijing has said we're not going to give in to anything, especially our industrial uh, policy going forward, and we will retaliate, very much focusing on the multilateral system they want to go through, the World Trade Organization. And, of course, there are threats of other measures not just these tariffs. We're hearing throughout Washington that the U.S. may crack down on Chinese technology uh, and also access to U.S. technology as well as other measures that the U.S. Treasury is mulling about cutting off Chinese investment as well. A need for a deal is obvious because a trade war could be just around the corner. Nathan King, CGTN at the White House.